curl these? Most people call them their eyelids. So we have an upper eyelid and a lower eyelid. Well, now we can call them palpebrae. Oh, and your light's on just to let you know. So it blinds me. Uh, the upper palpebra and lower palpebra, well, we know a bit about them. What, do you, what are your eyelids good for? Protection. Protection of the eyeball. Good. What else? They can block out some of the light so they can shade your eyeballs. So protect the eyeball against debris, shade your eyeballs from excessive light. You want to generally know, I would say, two functions of your eyelids. Well, if we look down the list, we need to know our palpebrae. We also need to know some glands. So if we look at a cut view, just a sagittal slice through this eyeball, here's our upper palpebra. Here's the lower palpebra. And we see this gland inside of that eyelid. This is what we call a tarsal gland. And the function of a tarsal gland is to produce a lipid-like secretion to prevent your eyelids from sticking together. So if I were writing this down on number 37, I would put tarsal glands, their function produces a lipid-like secretion to prevent your eyelids from sticking together. To prevent your eyelids from sticking together. So you think, ooh, has anyone ever woken up and their eyelids are stuck together? Mm -hmm. Normally that's indicative of uh, excessive secretions or the tarsal glands were producing, or you might have something like pink eye. So you rub those secretions away and you think, oh, there, now I can kind of open my eyeballs, or my eyelids specifically, pull those palpebrae apart, and you have to be able to open up your palpebrae or those eyelids to be able to see because this groove here, if you look in between the two, that's what we call a palpebral fissure. So your eyeball is located in our palpebral fissure. So when you look down the list, you have upper and lower palpebrae, tarsal glands, we'll get the ciliary glands in a sec, and then palpebral fissure. Well, let's make sure we know our ciliary glands and be careful because we looked at a ciliary ganglion. So the ciliary ganglion, ooh, that was cranial nerve number three for our autonomic nervous system. <coughs> ciliary glands are the glands by your eyelashes. What do you think a gland by the eyelash is for? Just based on what we already know. Oil not for the hair. Not tears. For it's the, right next to the eyelash. For the hair to the oil to okay. keep the hair moisturized. It's probably oil to keep that hair moisturized. Oh, that sounds like something we've already talked about. What was that? A sebaceous gland. So your ciliary glands are just sebaceous glands by these eyelashes. Nice. We continue down the list then. We've got our ciliary glands. They're just producing oil to keep your eyelashes supple or um, from drying out. Palpebral fissure, and then the last two that we have is, if you look at this palpebral fissure, you're gonna see these angles on either side. That's what we call a commissure or a canthus when you're reading about it. So this lateral commissure is on the lateral aspect of the eyeball. The medial commissure is on this inside portion closer to your nose. And if you look at your medial commissure, you're gonna see a pink fleshy body there. That's what we call the caruncle. Does anyone know what the function of your caruncle is? Tears. Not tears. <laughs> We're gonna get to tears. I hear the tears. What's your caruncle do though? What accumulates there? Uh, What's it called? I goobers. I goober. What else do you call it? Junk. Junk <laughs> in your I eye. Junk, yeah. Some people call it sleep. Whatever you call it, that stuff that accumulates in that medial commissure, that's what the caruncle produces. So it's producing um, a substance. It's basically to help keep that eye clean. So it's producing the substance to clean the eyeball. And of course, it accumulates in that area. The excess accumulates, and we call it eye goobers, or some one student said <laughs> eye boogers, or sleep, or eye cake is a new one. Interesting. Whatever you call it, that's what it is. And this 
concept of tears keeps coming up. Ooh, so let's talk about lacrimation for this last part. And if we were just to fill out a flow chart so that we know how lacrimation occurs, we know cranial nerve seven is associated with lacrimation. So that's gonna stimulate production of tears from our lacrimal glands. 